Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the vague sense of unease stalking through the halls of power. And it is time for episode 7 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. So, I'm just gonna wander for a little bit while I very briefly explain that, uh, hey, I have super bad allergies and I get very bad allergies in summer. Um, anyone who's watched any of my old Let's Plays will know that whenever I'm, whenever I'm recording something in summer, a bunch of episodes have me going, hey, sorry if I'm sniffly or whatever in this episode. It's the world's fault for trying to kill me. So, um, that out of the way, it's time to actually continue playing the game. So this is, I believe, the Deep Factory, which is um, the sinisterly named production plant where everything on the island is manufactured. I'm not actually super like prepped to go here just yet, so uh, it's just that this is the direction I happen to be walking in. So there's a few people left that we haven't uh, debriefed yet that we're going to go to eventually. But um, before then, I think I would like to do a evidence review and quickly have a look at the uh, pieces of information we've gathered so far. Although, we do have a uh, potentially good reason to be looking around here. Is my controller breaking? Why am I stumbling every few steps? I've gone through three Xbox controllers this, this year. I'll be, be, I will literally go insane if I have to get another one. Um, anyway, so... Oh, this is something we haven't encountered yet. Swipe crane system card to open barrier. I guess I need to find a crane system card. Fair enough. Uh, in addition to that, there's various... Oh my god, is this a puzzle? That's absolutely a puzzle. Interesting. So, okay, there's a puzzle here that we'll come back to later. I'm going to open this, uh, this point if I can find a blood crystal somewhere which hopefully I can find in here. You know, because the police are absolutely allowed to just take a dollar from a crime scene to pay for their taxi. The council normally maintain these machines well. I wonder what happened. So, Dead Nebula told us that one of the broken machines has a uh, an upgrade for our computer in it, which would be nice if I could get it. I... I mean... When I saw there was a broken machine in here, I assumed that that was going to be this, but... but... Tragically, that's not the case. There's one very simple question that's occurred to me um, since last episode, which is that um, Lady Love Dies seems to have some kind of a, of a class solidarity, or at least a sympathy with the citizens. And what I want to know is where that comes from. She's very much a member of the ruling elite of this society. She might have been exiled, but she was never a citizen. Obviously, the structural purpose for that sympathy is so that she comes across as a sympathetic protagonist to us, the uh, the players, because obviously we can tell instantaneously that this is an incredibly cruel and brutal society because we're supposed to pick up on that and they make that very clear from the beginning. But what I'm wondering is if they're ever going to expand on that and perhaps illuminate me as to why she has that uh, sympathy in the first place. People from a very unequal society who are in the upper echelons of that society don't tend to be sympathetic with the poor downtrodden masses unless they originate from those masses and even then they do tend to uh, lose some of their sympathies as soon as they get money in their pockets. Um, see an army of uh, working-class sellouts moving in the political sphere. Let's grab the fast travel. Fast travel unlocked. Mm. Like Idyllic beach. This image reminds you of a wonderful family holiday on a beach you had. You frolicked in the sea with your siblings. You have never been to a beach. Interesting. So, yeah, um... What the fuck are we doing here? Don't know. Um, what I really need to find is the communications end. Uh, you know what? I'm rambling and that's because when I have bad allergies, my brain turns into mush and I stop being able to think. But you know, the uh, endless content hose must continue to spew and therefore I must continue to make stuff. So let's just jump into the evidence review as soon as I find somewhere quieter than this. And we 
uh, empty out our our veins beautifully, glittering and glistening on the golden pedestal to things far greater than our than our own intelligence. Blood Dancer. Gifted technology to many races. Astral engineer without equal. Thinks nothing of ethics and used much of her technology to perform genocides across entire planets. Cool. That's a that's a normal way to behave and completely fine to do. Recording obtained. We haven't seen recordings before. What do they know? What have they seen? The eyes are watching and the ears are hearing. Recording 003. I can see it now, I think. These lines, like the air is forming around something weirdly. Like the air is a membrane that something is pushing against. Am I the only one that can see it? I'm scared but elated. Is this a tr cosmic truth? Okay, so I guess these little mini radio towers have these, uh, have uh, a recording class of collectibles, which I'm gonna guess right now are gonna shed some light on the origins of this society and how it was first created. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to uh, jump into the laptop, primarily so that I can switch the music onto uh, Island Ambience, so that it's a bit quieter. Because in that mode, the closer you are to a uh, well, somewhere around here, there are there are these uh, like loudspeaker posts, and that's where the music, like diegetically in the island, is coming from. Presumably, for the benefit of citizens that I am going to assume are denied the right to have a telephone. On the other hand, the one telephone we've seen so far is like a Nokia thirty eight hundred or something. It's a it's an old ass flip phone, and in and uh, in that case, who's to say they have music on them at all? All right, so dead nebula. See what we get this time. B two. Dead Moon, a fruity carbonated drink with added vitamins and minerals, sold at a discount to deep factory workers. Hmm. Yeah, I still think the deep factory is an incredibly sinister name to pick. Anyway, so let's have a sit down on this bench and uh, do the real important part of an investigator's daily job routine, which is to actually look at the information we've gathered so far. So, we still need to find information on the third and fourth holy seals. There may be a starlight upgrade in a broken vending machine in a warehouse. I'm sure that's what we found. Maybe I just missed where the actual upgrade was. We also can't find a way... Uh, we aren't allowed into the Marshall Barracks, which means they're hiding something. So we still need to talk to Lydia and Sam Daybreak. We need to go check out K-Hax's apartment. We need to talk to Aikiko 14. We need to talk to Crimson Acid. We need to talk to Henry Division. We need to talk to the Witness. Uh, then we also have some other information we can do. We can cross-reference these people. I don't want to go back and talk to one a second time until we've talked to everybody at least once, uh, so that I have the most information to grill them over. If the marshals who were supposed to be the first Holy Seal were body-swapped, who were the people who were killed? How were they replaced? What's going on with that? Uh, does that mean that the seal was never breached, or does that mean that these people who weren't marshals were somehow the seal? And why, and why was there damage at the grate at the penthouse? Did that let someone in or someone out? And why is the back door to Doom Jazz's clinic broken? So, we've also got case files on the suspects, which will have information on the ones we've actually talked to. Um, I'm not going to bother reading all of these out because you'll just have, you'll, you know, you've been watching the series, I'm sure. Um, but I'm just going to zip through these real quick just so that we know what we've got and who we've talked to. So far there doesn't seem to be anything tying Yuri Knight to any of the suspicious activities beyond the fact that he was on the phone a lot. We haven't talked to Witness, Lydia, Sam, H Henry or Aikiko yet, or Crimson Acid. Carmelina, there's really no connection between her and the crime except for the fact that she's being obstructive. Doom Jazz, however, has some interesting and suspicious evidence against him. So, we've got our various information for all of this stuff. Henry was allegedly found with ale an alleged murder weapon that may or may not actually be the murder weapon. Um, in fact, there's evidence, to, there's reason to think that that is not the murder weapon because the wounds are ragged but the blade is smooth. We also need to find K-Hacks, so we need to go to his house. We've got um, 
Yeah, the evidence is more heavily weighted against Aikiko 14 with regards to killing the, the marshals. But, um... Yeah, so I, I was kind of hoping that this system, in this system, the, the information itself would be a kind of a... What do you want to call it? A, an inventory system, so that these would be objects I could move around and mix with one another, and I could try and use this with that to show that I've had some kind of an intelligent idea. Not that I've ever had any of those. So yeah, um... Interesting. There's some stuff going on. So I've got a couple. I've got a couple theories going on at the moment, which we will come back to um, as we go along. But first, I do just want to check. Yeah, there's nothing new here. The timeline uh, is having the evidence we find plugged into it. I think. And the skins. I do. I, I, I think I'll go to this one for a bit. Uh, it's a bit more of a sandy, mellow vibe, you know. Uh, it's also occurred to me that the um, terrifying Shallows Starlight skin may be a clue as to why the water kills you. It is an illusion caused by a predator born in antiquity. Do not go into the Shallows. So, you know, that could be possibly related. Anyway, so let's actually have a look at my thoughts. So, so far, the evidence seems extremely weighted towards the idea that um, Aikiko is, is behind this. The pretty much direct evidence we have is that she's in charge of the marshals. The people who were killed were not marshals. Uh, she knows how to kill people because she is the head soldier. Um, also, she would have access to fuck with the uh, blood codes um, or possibly to obtain the blood of the, the syndicate council in the first place. Um, she's also got Henry in captivity and uh, isn't letting anyone talk to him and is has very quickly decided that that, that, that this poor bastard is the, the, the criminal behind all this. Additionally, Dr. Doom, Doom Jazz um, appears to have some kind of connection with Aikiko, and uh, Doom Jazz would be both in a position to lie about um, any of the medical testimony, and also is in a position to have corrupted the uh, blood archive backup data on the moon. Uh, in order to throw doubt all over this whole investigation. The evidence that this that Henry Division is being framed or is a convenient patsy seems pretty heavy, especially considering we found um, we found an empty blood canister, which I don't seem to have, which is weird. <laughs> uh, but we found an empty canister with traces of uh, all of the council's blood in it, which did not have fingerprints on, which means that someone was being careful about not being connected to that canister. But... I mean, why would you just throw it right next to the crime scene? So that itself is kind of suspicious. It makes me wonder if there's like a two-tier uh, framing going on. Because currently, it's extremely obvious that Aikiko 14 is lying about Henry, Henry Division and that she's trying to frame him to just get this over with so we can all move on to the next island. The obvious conclusion from that is that she's behind the murders. However, it's not impossible that her obstructive obstructiveness, her obstructiveness, her like reluctance to assist this investigation comes from a desire to um, hide the shame of the marshals. The marshals were supposed to protect the uh, the council, and yet the council are all slaughtered. Uh, additionally, two of her number are apparently imposters. If she didn't know about that, it's reasonable she would try to cover it all up to hide the incompetence of her administration of the marshal power structure, right? So, currently, I'm not. I feel like I'm being led to think that this is Aikiko and Doom Jazz working together to cover up the fact that they did the murders by pinning it on Henry Division, but I suspect that that is itself a misdirection attempting to convince me that um, that's what's going on and there's something deeper or stranger happening. I also really have no information with regards to K-Hacks whatsoever at this point, so I think actually that's what we'll, that's what we'll do next. We'll go uh, see if we can find... K-Hax is flat. Oh! Whoops. Okay. Oh, it's just... Okay. I thought that was going to be more important, but I guess I'll take a dollar. Thanks. <laughs> or did, Hang on. Can I platform? Is that what this is? Is the platforming route now open to me that would have been blocked previously? Doesn't look like it. So, um... I guess that's less interesting than I expected, although always nice to catch sight of another Shinji. You met that dog in the alleys between the houses? 
All she wants is treats, treats, treats. You, ha you try to have a conversation and nothing, just treats. Again, I feel like this is a veiled uh, means of referring to me, myself. Why are you being such a dick to me, Shinji? I wonder if- I really- I really do wonder if Shinji's attitude is different based on the way I interacted with him earlier when I was offered various things. So I've just remembered uh, that I do actually want to go have another look at that vending machine, but after that we'll go find Kahax's flat. And perhaps I will ramble about things on the way there. Hmm. I really- is there not? I don't- there is only one interactable component that I can see. Dead Nebula, you told me there was a thing. Where's the thing? I want the thing. Maybe it's in the other warehouse. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to be terrible for a moment because um, I don't normally talk about this stuff. I leave it all for the like ending panel at the end of videos, but I do have a Patreon and a Kofi if you would like to donate to me to help maintain my existence, which is a little bit important because I am very poor and I am uh, too disabled to work, which is why I make stupid internet videos for your entertainment. So um, all things considered, it'd be cool if you contemplated that. You do get access to a bunch of uh, unpublished prototype videos because I tend to make some like prototypes and practice runs before I ever start a new Let's Play. So there are those for all of the Let's Plays that I have previously made and a couple of Let's Plays that I did not go on to make. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, it's fine if you can't do that, but it uh, everything just got literally like £300 more expensive like this year. Uh, in the UK, our, our energy bills, uh, thanks to government malfeasance, were literally doubled in some cases. Anyway, uh, that's... I'm gonna move on from that for now. If you can't do that, by all means, just give me a like. Tell people that my channel is cool and they should watch my videos. That's also an option. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, goodbye. Why am I saying goodbye? Oh god, I'm panicking. I'm panicking because I ask people for money. This isn't good. This is terrible. <laughs> Maybe this is why I'm poor. Anyway, what the hell is this? Crane system unlock card. It's a card that unlocks the crane system. Wow, what a surprise. It's also got a magnetic strip on the back, which is interesting. It's nice to see that the uh, technology of this place has not moved with the times. Um, which, I mean, is partially obvious because this game is trying to strike a very specific vibe. And um, the sort of late 90s, early 00s vibe of Vaporwave absolutely requires no technology more advanced than that of a magnetic strip card reader or indeed a Nokia 3800. At least a 3310, which is a completely different type. Uh, aha, this is the one. So, once again, I find myself doing the vaguely metagamey uh, activity of the... Oh, okay. I see. Uh, the vaguely metagamey activity of just poking things and seeing what they do. I wonder if there's anything in all this cargo. Which is both a metagamey, out-of-character thing to do as a player... Like, it doesn't re it's not really fitting that most characters in video games explore every nook and cranny, open every cupboard, look for everything they can possibly find. But, um, there's definitely something in there. How do I- how do I get it? Oh, I- the crane. Aha, yeah, if I use the crane, that'll probably do it. How do I use the crane? I mean, I got the crane operator's key. Do I climb up there? Or oh, it must be this, right? Aha! Ah, okay, this is a puzzle. Um, this is a programming puzzle. Oh god, is it going to play this whole animation? I can't back out of this, can I? There we go. Need to figure out the right combination of switches. Well, obviously. So, I'm going to come back to this puzzle another... Uh, another episode because I don't want to have to spend ages solving this and um, it might take me a little while. To be honest, I'll probably edit it all out. On the other hand, I'll forget that that's there. So, you know what? Fuck it. This has been a bit of an inconsistent, weird episode. I'm just going to try and solve that puzzle. Like, we'll go we'll go investigate K-Hax's flat next episode. So, um, I'm probably going to cut here while I fiddle around and figure things out. So after a little bit of experimentation, it looks like switches 1 and 2 control rotation, so I need switch 2 to rotate clockwise. 
Uh, switches two and three appear to control the motion of the, the dropper, and switch five controls it going up and down rather than left and right. So let's try this one and see what happens. So if I'm... so I think this should do it then. I could really do without this noise though. That moved the crates. Hell yeah it did. What have we got? This looks like a nightmare computer upgrade. It's a space helmet. What? Looks like it's been dumped or hidden. Dumping and hiding are separated by a thin line. It smells of Lydia's perfume. Lemon and raspberry. Why has she been wearing a space helmet? You need a space helmet to help get through the second seal. Lydia, Lydia, Lydia. Well, that's extremely concerning. So this um, this evidence factors into my, my long-held personal theory that it's going to turn out that uh, literally all of these people are involved in this murder in some way. This is a vast conspiracy. But, um... Yeah, gosh. Okay, so Lydia. Hmm, jeez. But what's weird is that we already found a space helmet. Shinji showed us, in, gave us in fact, a space helmet uh, so that we can get through the uh, the second seal ourselves. In fact, isn't it a bloodstained helmet? Where is it? Customized space helmet has seen better days and is an old model but allows the wearer to traverse space. Anyway, Shinji said that um, he found that helmet um, abandoned right near the murder, hidden behind a planter. So, if uh, if Lydia also has one, it stands to reason that two people went through that, at least. Island Sequence 21. We restored the heartbeat of Moonlight Petal. She slumbers under Siberia. We must give her more power. Yeah, I'm not sure it's a good idea to actually be resurrecting these dead alien gods, like... I mean, look, I know, I hate to be a Luddite, you know, I hate to, I hate to be anti-progress. But I've just, I've just got legitimate concerns, you must understand. Um, there's no reason to assume that I'm just scared of progress, you know? I think, I think it's only fair that we carefully, uh, carefully test all of these things before we ever actually resurrect dead alien psychic gods, which will encourage us to institute the single most unequal society in existence where the entire populace are periodically slaughtered for the sake of basically space rent. Um, hmm, I think that's the... I'm pretty sure that's the temple up there, which is... Oh, hey, a spa! Fantastic. I'd love to wash my feet. What do we get for this one, I wonder? I feel like I can concentrate harder. Well, geez, I wish I had that power. Feels like I could find anything, even if it's hidden. Meditate unlocked. Please hold the meditate button to reveal the island's secrets. These islands are weird. So if I hold right buffer, I can meditate. Which does this. Mysteries are revealed. Oh, okay. So this is like, I guess, every collectible left on the entire island? Can I make them stop being lit up? Because if I can't, uh, if I can't stop them being lit up, I might have to actually revert to a save. <laughs> um, because that's going to drive me actually goddamn insane. Locked from the other side is really just an invitation to commit trespass. This is true in real life as well, you may discover. Okay, good, it did wear off. Anyway, that's interesting. That's, um... Jeez, I actually kind of wish I didn't have that. Oh! Oh jeez, gotta answer my phone as well. Hello? I was hoping you would have come to see me by now, lady. Hello, Crimson. You remember my voice, but you don't come and visit. Uh... Fuck it, where is Crimson Acid? I wanted to, but I have no idea where you are on this island. Come and find me in the sewers under the apartments. I have a nice little setup there. What are you doing in the sewers? You've been gone for ten islands. Things change. 
I'm trading secrets for money. I've got things to tell you for a price. I've got something for starlight as well. A nice upgrade that will shine a light on some truths. You're going to need some firmware upgrades to break into all of the nightmare computers. I've got one to sell you. Then I'll take a trip to the sewers. If you're having trouble finding me, use Starlight's AR mode. Starlight's functionality is supposed to be a secret. Get with the program, lady. I've just set myself to findable. I'll show up in the AR mode now. I'll be waiting. Bring crystals. I'm not running a charity. Interesting. Very interesting. Over there. See, I thought... For some reason, I thought that Crimson Acid was related to the Deep Factory, but I guess I was completely wrong about that. So, um, at least we know where Crimson Acid is now. Oh, hey, a bar. What an appropriate place for a detective to end an episode. But yeah, at least we can find Crimson Acid to go interrogate them in addition to everyone else that we need to talk to. Oh my god, we've got so much work to do. Can I please have some whiskey? Oh, this is... Oh, those are the citizen... Those are the citizen apartments, right? I'm actually completely fucking lost. That's the... That's the council building over there. So I've actually looped across the centre of the island. Um, rather than go anywhere of the places I intended to go. So this has been kind of a floaty, wibbly, wobbly, ambly, confused session. And there may or may be one or two more of those before we're finished. But um, thanks for watching. That's going to be all from me for today. As we, as we gaze upon the unsightly bulbous balloon of a corporate entity. Beneath the, the pillar of my own personal babble. That's going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.